Hey guys, so today we're going to be reviewing The Invitation. Now this is one that you did want to hear my thoughts on. I actually just went and saw this this morning, so just a couple hours ago, and instead of writing out like a whole video review or movie review for it and like really delving deep into it, I just wrote down some bullet points. So I thought we would just have like a casual conversation about the movie and you can let me know how it goes. Um, but yeah, I just felt like doing that, doing that for this one because, well, you'll find out why a little bit Bit later on. Now when this movie was first announced I actually was pretty excited. I thought it looked kind of good. Um, not typically my kind of movie but I was intrigued to say the least and this is one of those rare instances where when I found out it was a PG-13 rating my anticipation kind of went down a little bit and that's pretty rare because I love PG-13 movies but as we all know this movie is a vampire movie and given that I wanted some like disturbing visuals I wanted them to like push the horror side of vampires um, because it's been a while since we've had like a really good vampire horror movie with like gore and things like that so a PG-13 rating I thought was just a little bit limiting. Now I still went in with an open mind I saw that they were promoting it as psychologically scary so I thought okay if there's no gore maybe on the psychological level it'll be kind of disturbing in some way I don't know so I had you know still some hope that there was going to be something you know that was worthwhile and that was kind of horrific and disturbing but I was still very nervous that this movie would end up being kind of cheesy not gonna lie so as I'm sure you've noticed lately movies that get a theatrical release have been then released straight to streaming or video on demand like within a month later I feel like the turnaround time is getting shorter and shorter which is great because it increases accessibility to a lot of movies and they usually go on to all different streaming services depending on the production companies that are working behind the movies so that's really where NordVPN can help you out and they happen to be the sponsor for today's video so a VPN stands for virtual private network and this is the best way to increase your security and privacy while using the internet. It conceals your IP, hides your virtual location, and shields your data from snoopers and cyber attacks. But of course, my favorite thing about using a VPN is you can access any country's streaming service selection with just one click. So if you're bored with your country's selection or your favorite shows or movies have been removed from your country's streaming sites, you can always access different countries streaming through just one click on NordVPN and then you refresh your streaming site and boom, you have access to to endless amounts of entertainment. I have been using NordVPN a ton lately to watch Big Brother because I live on the West Coast and while Big Brother is based in the West Coast, their live show happens on the East Coast much earlier. So what I do is I click over to New York put my location on the East Coast and I'm able to watch Big Brother live instead of having to wait for the Pacific Standard Time later in that evening. So not only is it great for expanding your entertainment selection, but you can also watch your shows no matter what time zone you're in. Also what's great is you can use NordVPN on up to six devices so you're always protected and it is hands down the easiest VPN to navigate and use. So to catch movies like The Invitation, as soon as they're released to streaming, you can go to nordvpn.com slash possessedbyhorror to get a two-year plan with an exclusive deal plus four bonus months for free. And it's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So there really is no risk to try it for yourself today. So Evie takes a DNA test and discovers a long-lost cousin she never knew she had. Invited by her newfound family to a lavish wedding in the English countryside, she's at first seduced by the sexy aristocratic host, but is soon thrust into a nightmare of survival as she uncovers twisted secrets in her family's history and the unsettling intentions behind their sinful generosity. So my first impression when I saw the trailer for this and I saw what the storyline was, it really reminded me of Ready or Not and there are so many scenes that are very reminiscent of Ready or Not as well. Now you think that'd be a good thing, right? It is interesting but it's not necessarily original. There's a lot of other factors going on um, and not necessarily in a good way. Firstly, I would describe this movie as a romantic thriller. I don't really like to get into too nitpicky of subgenres of horror because a horror movie is a horror movie. Horror is very much an umbrella term but this is a romantic thriller. Yeah, like there's a lot of romance in this and I personally was expecting the level of romance that we have in Ready or Not. There's 10 times that amount in this one and I'm not a fan of romance. So I wouldn't necessarily call it psychological horror, 
Although there is some of that going on, of course, because given the, the circumstances, uh, obviously there's some psychological stuff going on. Now, I've seen some people say this is a gothic horror movie, and I kind of disagree. This is just my opinion, of course. Again, not trying to be too nitpicky about definitions here, but just because something involves vampires and takes place in an old English mansion doesn't mean it's a gothic movie. The tone of this movie is entirely not gothic, in my opinion. There's like a cheesy underline or humor. There's some humor going on a little bit, um, especially with Evie's friend character. There's, yeah, she's supposed to be the comic relief of this. So overall, the tone of it was really not uh, super gothic. I mean, the setting was gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but it didn't scream gothic to me. And just because it's vampires, there was maybe a couple scenes that like were like gothic, but if that's what you're looking for, I wouldn't recommend it. Like you're not gonna find a Crimson Peak uh, vibe going on in The Invitation. So to me, this movie is, a middle of the road. Actually, it's a little bit less than middle of the road. There's some decent parts, um, there's some bad parts, but mostly just mediocre parts. And honestly, you know that I always try to find things that I like in a movie before getting into things I dislike about a movie. And it was really hard to kind of think of things that I liked. There were certain scenes uh, that gave me hope uh, the, they weren't fantastic scenes in and of themselves. Like they weren't horrific like I wanted them to be. They didn't push it. Obviously it's PG-13. I think they get one F word in this movie. There's a, t there's a moment where her friend says frick instead of the F word. Um, and I feel like that's because of the rating <laughs> that they got. They get one F word. So, but I could not find much I liked in this movie. There were time, I mean, I was bored throughout a lot of it, to be honest. The setting is probably my favorite part. I really enjoy movies taking place in England. I think they are just inherently gorgeous because of the countryside, the buildings, the architecture, and the history. So that was stunning but that's pretty much where what I liked about the movie ends. I actually didn't even like the performances that much and I hate saying that, um, but they were annoying. I, I thought all of the characters were annoying, all of them, especially the uh, sexy aristocrat who's seducing her. I couldn't even look at him sometimes because he was trying so hard and it was making me uncomfortable. Like I, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but I just like, was cringing, I had to look away because he was doing this like English charm thing, just a little bit, coming on a little too strong and it was very off-putting to look at, so I did have to look away. And that's so bizarre to say out loud, <laughs> but I'm just trying to reiterate the experience that I had a couple hours ago. None of the characters felt like real people and I think that's really the issue I had with the performances. Also, I went and rewatched Bodies, Bodies, Bodies like two days ago, and they feel like such real people, and then I inevitably compare those performances with a movie like this, and this just feels like such a run-of-the-mill like thriller movie that none of them feel real. They all feel scripted. Their deliveries were annoying, and they it just came across as like they weren't real people. Like none of them were really believable. Granted, it's a vampire story, so I don't know if the story in general is supposed to be believable, but it just, I wanna feel a connection to the people and like make them feel like they're actually someone I might know or have seen online or like can relate to in some way. And I didn't get that from any of the characters. Uh, way too much romance going on in this. I was rolling my eyes and I want to acknowledge that that is a personal bias of mine because I hate romance in anything. I can't read romance in books. Like I hate romance dramas in books and things like that. I just really don't like romantic <laughs> stories. Um, and this had so much of it that I was like so bored throughout a lot of the romance scenes. So that, I mean, again, that's my personal bias. Not everyone's going to be you know, turned off by that. But I was just, I wanted something more like Ready or Not. Ready or Not had like minimal, you know they love each other. Ready or Not felt like real people, in my opinion. Um, but that's the level of romance that I was kind of expecting and we just get way more of it uh, in this movie. And my concern going in, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, is it was going to be cheesy and it was. Everything was cheesy, cheesy deliveries of lines, cheesy lines, uh, just, <sighs> just very standard, like, 
I, I just wanted so much more. I wanted something special out of this and nothing stood out at all, like nothing special. And I'm not even going to do spoilers in this video to be honest because it is so highly predictable that you probably already know how it ends. Like, I'm gonna say, that's not even a spoiler. You probably can guess. If you've seen half the trailer, you could probably like piece together um, what is going to happen. And I mean, I did in the like halfway point of the movie, like I just knew where things were going. So many things were made obvious that they were going to come back up later. And again, <laughs> This is a movie that kind of treats the viewer like they're stupid. And I'm not a huge fan of when movies do that. So when you have to show me multiple times what is gonna come back later, I got it the first time. You know, you made it really obvious the first time that it's gonna come back. And so I don't need the, the vision, the flashback, if you will, um, of, you know, it's gonna come back. I get it, I get it. Just everything was predictable, everything, everything. Down, down to everything was predictable. Also, why was it that long? <laughs> like, I don't wanna be mean, but why was it an hour and 40 minutes? There was so, so much that could have been cut out of that, to be honest. Um, it could have been an hour 20 and it would have been better because it would have been easier to digest. You know, it would have been like, I didn't feel like I wasted a bunch of my time. Not that I felt like that really. Um, you know, there were times where I was entertained and I was like really hoping for more horror and I got some horror in it. So it was fine, but it was just so much worse than I thought it was going to be and my expectations were already a little bit low. They just could have cut out a bunch. I think I just wish it was an hour 20. I feel like then it would be just like really like middle. Some people are gonna love it, some people are gonna hate it, um, but they just added a bunch of filler in it, I feel, and I didn't like it. And although I'm not doing spoilers, I will say the very, very end scene, like the f final scene that we get, not good. That I wish it ended before that. I just really was not a fan with the direction of that. And I don't know if they're trying to build up for a sequel or what, uh, I just hated the end scene. Like it was so cheesy, like so cheesy. I just wish they shortened it, made it a little bit serious in tone, a little bit more like Crimson Peak maybe, a little bit more gothic. Um, and it would have been a little bit better would have earned like one more full star from me now there is a point in the movie where things take a turn not necessarily with more horror but we get well there is more horror in the scene but the storyline kind of takes a turn and i was really anticipating a different direction i was excited like it got me excited this one scene got me excited um and then it just like fizzled out and didn't really go anywhere that I wanted it to. So it gave me high hopes. It gave me a little bit more anticipation of things to come. And I really liked that change all of a sudden, like that turn of the story, even though they really hinted at it all along. Now, I wanna talk about the horror elements in this, because obviously this is a horror movie, um, but it is very minor, like the horror elements in it are very small, so if you are a beginner to horror at all, you could definitely handle this one. This would be good to watch with like a family, or you know, just, it's just good for beginners. And honestly, there is more romance scenes than there are horror scenes. And that is very disappointing when I was not anticipating a romantic horror movie in general. And then I was expecting more horror and I hardly got any. Maybe part of it is because I don't find vampires scary at all. Like I've never found them scary. Even in my favorite vampire movie, 30 Days of Night, I don't find them scary. I think just visually looking, visually looking, how they look is like my favorite visual of a vampire but just conceptually, they've never been scary to me. So it is disappointing that there's more romance going on. Like they spend way more time, way more time. They spend longer building this relationship, right? And like making it like a romantic drama than they do actual scary parts. And then the scary scenes that actually took place felt very like forced in there. And like they were thinking, oh yeah, we're making a horror movie. Let's throw that in there. Um, they felt very, uh, forced sometimes. And then really in the end, we didn't get any horror. Like it turned into kind of a different vibe entirely. And the horror that we got from the beginning did not match what I think they were intending to be the horror in the end. So personally, overall, I give it two out of five. 
Like some people will like it. Uh, it it was well executed. Like whatever they did, they did it. <laughs> they they executed it. And it is one of those that's like so easy to watch. Like you could throw this on with a group of people and just talk over it for some of it. And like, it's just easy. It's one of those easy run of the mill, straightforward type movies. So I think this will land with certain audiences. Maybe I did have too high expectations, even though I really didn't because I was thinking I wasn't going to like it, which was correct. <laughs> My light just turned off. So we're gonna finish this video out in the dark because I'm almost done and it, it, my light died. So anyway, <laughs> I don't think it needs a theater viewing or a theater experience, if you will. I was just kind of bored. So I feel like this is very much one that you can just stream at home and wait for it to be video on demand or streaming for free on one of your streaming sites. I would recommend waiting for it to come out because there really was nothing special about it. Unless you really love vampires. Like if you're obsessed with vampires and their aesthetic um, and their like backstory, or if you love romantic dramas slash thrillers, maybe see this in theaters. But other than that, it's worth waiting for. I would love to hear your thoughts on The Invitation if you've seen it uh, down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.